before the season begins? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think a lot of that stuff's overrated, personally. Um, I think it's just about getting Debo back um, in practice consistently with the reps. We've eased him in since him having a late start. Um, he's just starting to get up to normal practice. I think it'll be here in the next couple of days, but um, it'll come. And I like I didn't know they worked after. I like that they do that. Uh, mclinchy has been worked back in a little bit now. What have you just what have you seen from him? How, how far along is he? Um, I mean, you, you can't see anything wrong with him out there. He com talks about being pain free and stuff, so it's been great. Um, so I picture him kind of in the same boat as Ken Law, same boat as Greenlaw, Aziz, um, guys who have some big offseason stuff who are doing great, but we got to monitor their reps and stuff so they don't have that wear and tear as we ease them back in. Are you happy with how the offense responded yesterday? I noticed, I think that there was intentional penalties given there to move him back to, to, to their five. Um, was, was, was that intentional? And were you yeah, happy with that? Get back on track, um, period. So you have a play, but then ends up being first and 20. So just situational football. And um, it's fun to call holding penalties on people who don't hold to watch them get very sensitive about it. But that's kind of part of it. Was it Trent that you called him? Uh, I called it on Kittle. Um, I called one on Nate Sudfeld. Um, <laughs> And I think I called one with Glenchy. Just all the people I think it'll bother. <laughs> what's uh, what's Jason Verrett's timeline? I guess he's he's running pretty well on the field. Does that move up his possibility to get into camp? To get him into camp, we'd love to get him ready for week one. I think that's his mindset. Um, and so I'll never go against him on that. But um, I'm definitely ready if he's not ready for week one to get him to whenever he's ready. If he comes back week one, week four, week eight, at the end of the year, um, that guy is, everyone knows how talented and good of a player he is, but um, he's one of the best leaders on our team, too. So, um, you know, I thought our first year we had him here, it was similar. And I thought we brought him back a hair too early because he was healthy, but he just wasn't, didn't have his legs back quite yet. And he got thrown in that game versus, I think, Pittsburgh in week three. He got beat on a go route, and that's when we saw his, he, he wasn't quite there yet. And then it's hard to start back. Uh, so we definitely don't want to do anything too soon and give him the time to get back to being Jason. We talked a lot about Brandon Ayuk's demeanor yesterday, but I mean, on the field, he's just been pretty dominant. Have you seen any different part of his game? I mean, coming from a receiver, what have you seen from him from last year to this year? It's just um, he's he's developing and all the stuff he needed to do to get better. I mean, he comes off the ball every play. He runs full speed every play. Uh, he's not slow playing stuff anymore. He's not sitting there and fighting with guys with his hands. He's doing it with his feet, with his hips, um, creating edges by running, breaking down. Um, he, if you want to get open in this league, you got to you got to be so violent and on how you run and putting your knees into the ground and everything. And that's hard on guys a lot. They do that like three days in a row, and sometimes they got to take a week off. Um, that's why it's so crucial how these guys prepare. Um, and it's hard when we're not around them. But um, BA, he did it all when he was away from us. He did it all throughout OTAs, and his body can handle everything he's doing. And that's why he's getting better right now. Well, along those lines, how's, how's Danny Gray done as far as playing with that? needed violence at that position. Yeah, he's, he's coming along. I mean, he's got his rookie stuff, just like all of them pretty much do usually. Um, but I've liked how he's responded. You know, it's pretty much guaranteed that a rookie, especially a rookie receiver, is going to do something to bother me in every practice. Um, and that's how, but that's how you coach guys to get them better. And I've really been impressed with him that every time we get on him for something and <clears throat> um, the next day he responds, he doesn't sorry for himself. He doesn't think we're picking on him. Um, he hears us, he listens, and he goes out and usually fixes it the next day. Uh, without, uh, if you can't name someone on, on your roster, who is the most decisive runner you've ever coached and who's the best route runner? Um, decisive running back? Um, I mean, Arian Foster was pretty decisive. He got downhill right away, um, never messed around. Um, Elijah's pretty decisive. Um, what's that? You said it not on our current? Your, your questions are so slow and wrong. I, I don't always hear them all. Um, route runners, I mean, when you put him, Julio was the best because he had all, he's the only guy who was that explosive and that fast who could break down that violently. And that's why um, he was such a problem. Andre Johnson was the closest to that that I had. Um, when it just comes to route running, people you guys don't know, like David Anderson was unbelievable. Um, just guys who um, you don't think can make it, but they have a way of separating. And um, 
Durant, he was one of the better ones. Owen Davis was a great one. Jordan Reed. How do you evaluate that, like, when guys are coming out of college? Because Juwan was somebody who, you know, like, athletically was maybe questionable, but just had the knack for separating. Like, is that just tape? How do you yeah, sort you of? got to watch how they separate versus people and how they move. And Juwan is a little unusual in his movement, so it doesn't jump off to everyone. But if you watch him, um, he creates an edge on people every single play. And, and when he doesn't, he never stops running. So he's violent and big enough that he fights through everything. And then when he has the hands, even when he's covered, he's stepping back to the ball, um, which was similar to KB in that way. Um, but Juwan was a, is a little unorthodox in his movement. but. I feel if you talk to the corners out there and stuff, he's been the toughest one to cover. I think BA's. Uh, yesterday was a really good day for the passing game. Is week two, second block of practices, kind of when the offense usually starts hitting its stride in camp? Um, it's back and forth. I actually, the only reason I know that was, everyone felt it was a good day because Corey told me that before he came in. Um, so I, I didn't totally feel that way. Um, maybe it's because we had less passes. We had a short yardage period, so they're, less things could go wrong So, um, in the past game. But um, I didn't totally feel it that way. I, it's, I, I don't get too caught up in winning the day. I get totally caught up in the process, even when some stuff looks terrible. Sometimes, I mean, out there, I'm really upset. But then when you watch the film, you get to talk to guys. It's, it's kind of the best thing that could happen, because that stuff's going to happen eventually. And you've got to put guys through situations. And when everything goes right, that's kind of a, a fake um, a fake deal because it's not going to go right. And so you just try to put them through everything that you can. Uh, Brian, Brian Young is going in the Hall of Fame today. Um, there's signage up around the stadium celebrating that. Uh, are you guys doing anything as a team today to commemorate it? Will you watch his speech? And has he addressed the guys at all this camp? I would camp? love to watch his speech tonight. I don't know what time it's at. Um, usually it's during our walkthroughs, so I got to see. I mean, we missed a lot of Johns last year um, with that. So we'll replay it for people. Um, but I mean, I love BY. I was. A ball boy when he got drafted, um, and he talk about a rookie who comes in who doesn't act like a rookie. Um, that guy was a man from day one, um, and for me to even know that as a seventh grader, I mean, it shows how unusual it was and how much he stuck out. Um, and I think that was our Super Bowl year, um, and then just how long of a career he had. I got to see him in Atlanta. He'd come out and um, he was tight with Q, so he got to work with us a little bit. And he was a guy I tried to bring here a few years ago. Just the situation wasn't right at the time, but B Y is. So deserving as a player and one of the most impressive people, too. That, that 94 team was famously uh, competitive in, in training camp. How much of that do, do you remember being a ball boy? Uh, I remember a lot of it. Yep. That's most of the stuff I remember is football stuff. Um, but that, that was such a fun year. I mean, they brought in William Floyd, um, bar none, competing um, um, with Rathman. Um, they had all the receivers. You had. I mean, then Dion wasn't there in camp, but I think he came week three. You had Ken Norton Jr. who just got there for the first year, which changed everything. You had older veterans like Gary Plummer coming in who were awesome. Um, Richard Dent um, gave his rookie, a, gave one of the rookie receivers his golf club for some fishing derby putting thing. And he's dropped the golf club and it went in a lake. Um, and he offered someone $200 that they'd go find it the next day. So the next day, I went over there with goggles and shoes and went swimming in that nasty lake um, and got that golf club and got $200. It was awesome. Um, but that, I mean, that was so cool. I mean, Ricky Jackson, um, everybody, Eric Davis. I mean, there was, that was as cool of a thing to be around as I can remember. Are there guys on your roster like that now that came in as rookies and didn't feel like rookies? Uh, Bosa, yeah. Bosa's been a professional since three years old. Eric <laughs> uh, Snyder had his best career season before he left to Seattle. Now he's back. What can you say about him and what Chris Kacerik is able to do to get so much out of his guys? Um, I mean, I think the style that Chris allows him to play with um, really gives him some freedom. And Kerry's one of the smarter D linemen I've been around. Um, so when you have a style that allows him to make plays and you're smart enough to figure out how to do it, it gives you a huge advantage. And I can pay, compare Kerry a lot to what Ronnie Blair was for us um, a few years ago, just a guy who can kind of do everything. Um, the first day, he might not jump out to people. But by the 10th day, you realize he's there every single day. And um, during our COVID year, that rough year, I mean, he was one of the true leaders of our team. And he was a guy we didn't want to lose. It was tough when we did. And I feel very fortunate to have him back. Elijah Mitchell was a bit of a revelation last year. What have you seen from him this year to build on? Um, I've been excited the last couple practices because he had such a 
his off season he, um, took him a while to recover from the stuff that he had to get done. So he didn't get much done in OTAs. And the month away, I could say coming back, he had really bulked up and stuff and put some good size on. And um, now it's about just getting him in there and um, getting used to the wear and tear again so we can improve in the pass game, improve in some of the runs, improve in some of the bigger runs, stuff that he knows and he's so capable of getting better. It's just been getting him healthy enough to allow him to develop that stuff. How much is having Trey Lance, <clears throat> excuse me, change your playbook? Not really at all. Um, I mean, you do the same stuff and you just, add, you just got a couple more elements. Um, when you have a threat of a, a running quarterback, um, that can change defenses. And when you see how it changes them, then you adjust to that. But, um, you know, we had this stuff in last year. We've worked on stuff. And even when you do stuff that seems different to everyone else, it's the exact same play to the line. It's the exact same play to the running back. It's the exact same play to the receivers. But if they don't count for him, then he gets to run. Um, so it doesn't really change as much as it seems. People have been, some people have been skeptical of making Nate Sudfeld your backup quarterback just because he doesn't have you know, the resume of actually playing. Has he given, if you lack any confidence in him, has his training camp given you more uh, confidence um, that he can do it? Yeah, we have, we've been here with Nate for a year, so that, that's given us confidence to you know, build the roster that we have with him. Um, he's giving me confidence now because I feel I'm getting better each day. I thought yesterday was the best practice of camp, and uh, hopefully that continues. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.